Hello everyone. All right, I'm 365 days of horsemanship. Um, I'm like five days behind, so I have got to start doing these and catching up. Um, but I'm really excited to be able to say that I'm behind because I've been too busy having loads of fun. Um, and that's really nice to say. Um, so I'll start with the second two days of Elsa's clinic. Um, I've been three days back now from it and I think it's probably one of the most powerful clinics I've probably ever been on, like for a single event. Um, and in terms of like the depth or the width of the shift that I feel like I've made. Um, yeah, a lot of work. I think the second two days around really honing in on this idea of timing. And I think that in the past, I've always had um, a bit of a proclivity for anticipation and being in the moment beyond the moment that's happening right now. Um, and I could go back and, you know, browbeat about why that might have been or how I've ended up the person that I am today. But um, knowing that about myself, knowing that I have this tendency to try to anticipate and stay ahead all the time and never be late and always be um, doing the right thing before I need to and always be ahead of the game um, actually was my biggest mistake and my biggest I don't want to say failing but I think that something that's really been a game changer for me is understanding that the difference between a mistake and a lesson is that you don't realize you're making a mistake once you realize it becomes a lesson and and if I didn't, by not allowing myself in the past to live in the present and observe what's happening and then observe what happens afterwards and what happens afterwards and what happens afterwards, I'm not allowing myself the opportunity to be present in the mistake to learn the lesson. Um, and that was a really huge change for me. And actually just taking that step back and just practicing observing what's happening and then what's happening now and just saying, I'm not going to react. I'm not going to do anything. And Elsa calls it making deliberate mistakes. And I think it's a really powerful new piece. And she was saying that she's been teaching this recently and it's been really powerful for some of her students. And I definitely would say that I am one of them. Um, she talks about this like 80, 20 ratio where like 80% of the time you want to feel successful. You want your horse to feel successful. Um, so you try and be ahead of the game. And then 20% of the time you slow down and you just deliberately try to make a mistake. And I think for me, having those moments where I deliberately tried to make the mistake and then discovering actually that I did know what was going to happen more often than I thought I did meant that I actually ended up slowing down more even when I was trying to get ahead because I was like, yeah, I still have time here. And actually it made my timing so much more clearer and so much more precise because when I'm constantly trying to jump in, to the first possible thing that happens, it's always really small, you know? Either it's really small or I actually missed it and then I'm late, you know, I missed what was going on because I'm too busy focusing on what I think might be about to happen that I'm not actually looking at what's really happening now. Whereas when I slow down, it's like I'm able to just observe and observe and observe and know what I might do or might not do. And I also it also gives the horse the opportunity to surprise me and there are a lot of times where Abel did surprise me and I also think I realized like if I always try to get ahead I never give him the chance to progress I never give him the chance to progress because if I'm constantly assuming that the same thing is going to happen every time that's happened before I'm not giving them the opportunity to say actually this time I can look at the environment twice and not freak out you know like and allow myself to make the deliberate mistake and say oh I think he's gonna I think he's gonna get stressed after this second time of thinking about the environment and then he doesn't that gives me the opportunity to know that maybe I can wait next time as well and it also gives me an opportunity to go into flow to choose a new place with that first bite of grass and say that is so great and help him remember that he was able to look at it twice whereas if I'd have just started moving during the second time firstly that reinforces his pattern that he needs help and and enforces code, reinforces codependence rather than independence, it also doesn't help me to help him progress. 
because he doesn't get the opportunity to, do, to stretch himself and decide whether this is something he can handle on his own. So it was really interesting. It was really, really interesting. Um, yeah, it was, there was so much deep learning, so much deep learning and just, yeah, really fun um, things to try each day. And I think this like stepping into pressure sometimes rather than leaving, like just the whole idea that I might step in and be playful and that might be a better form of support for a horse that actually wants me closer. It's just mind blowing to me because I feel like I've been given permission finally within myself to have ideas that I just never would have even thought of before. Like it was just so reflexive for me to work in the flight spectrum that I never even considered so many things that I might do that were more like play related and more like let's push in, let's do a thing together, let's be here together in this moment um, rather than kind of retreating all the time because not only is it a physical retreat but there's also a mental retreat. If I'm not thinking about how I can stay and play, I'm running, I'm thinking about how I can, to use the ambulance term, scoop and go. You know, I'm constantly trying to scoop and go away from all the problems all the time. But actually, it's like standing with the problem and saying, we've got a problem. What are we going to do about it? Actually, sometimes to take that approach is really what the horse needs. They need to feel like that you're there with them and that you hear them and that you're in that moment. So, yeah, it was super, super cool. Um yeah super cool i am so glad that i did it um i feel yeah just i mean i've been back for three days now and i feel like every day is just getting better like i've tried a lot of things i've made a lot of haven't made a lot of mistakes i've learned a lot of lessons since i've been back because even the mistakes that I have made, I've been really aware of them. I've gone, oh, that was the wrong timing. Oh, I was late. And I'm also noticing as I go along, lots of little times where I'm, I am reflexively or habitually having poor timing. And while I'm doing these like automatic processes, you know, putting on the halter, doing the gate, like leading the horse, you know, all these things that I'm doing, where just, you know, occasionally during those tasks, I'm seeing myself do something and thinking, oh, that was bad timing, actually. I was a little bit late or, you know, actually I released at the wrong time or I could have released at a better time or I could have waited longer or been more supportive into a better feeling. And actually just being able to reflect on those, I just feel like is so powerful. Like, I really feel like I'm like, I've just jumped and I'm on this like completely like rocket launch of of learning which is really really cool um really cool um so yeah really exciting um just had the best time it was such a lovely atmosphere it was a really nice group of people really interesting group of horses there was so much variety as well like that was really great too because I think um there was a lot for people to see and I learned a lot actually it was really nice this time like having two horses on a clinic is great like I get to learn a lot and I get Elsa's help with all my specific problems and the things I'm struggling with but and guidance and reassurance and all that stuff but having one horse is really nice because for half a day I get to chill out and watch everybody else and do a little bit of sleeping and chilling and resting and processing um and so yeah it was just really nice really nice vibes all in from start to finish really um yeah so yeah pretty amazing really lots of lots of cool lessons <laughs>